Howdy, howdy. This is Mr. Potter. In our previous videos, we talked about working around the Linux command line. In our first video, we talked about how to navigate the file system, how to use CD to change directory and LS to get a list of files. In our second video, we talked about how to view text files because there are certain situations where you will log remotely into a Linux system through the command line to look at, say, logs or to check the settings in a, in a file. In our third video, we talked about how to deal with memory and how to deal with jobs running things in the background or the foreground, how to kill tasks, how to suspend tasks. But going back to what we talked about in earlier videos, looking at text files often gives us some information that we need. And if we're remotely logging into a Linux system through the command line, oftentimes we may need to actually edit a file. And we won't have a nice graphical editor, editor to use. So we may have to use a text-based text editor. And there are several out there. Nano is one that I like to use because I think it's very user-friendly. I think the learning uh, level of it is very uh, low. It's really easy to pick up. Emacs is what I originally learned when I got onto Linux systems back in the mid-90s. But a text editor that you can find on virtually any system is VI. And um, you're going to hear a lot of arguments about which one's the better of these. I'm not really concerned with the better, but I will tell you that VI or Vim, as you may find it in other places, some places may use a modified version of it, you're going to find VI in virtually every Linux environment you get into. And so today's video, we're going to be focusing on how do I do some minor text editing, real quick text editing, using the VI text editor. So I've got a file called, let me change my episode 4 directory. I've got a file called Lots of Lines. And if you remember in our third video, we talked about our A Million project, this program that wrote in A Million. And if you can see down here at the bottom, we've got about 70,000 lines of A Million being printed out. Um, and I also did the line numbers, which we talked about using the grep command in the previous video. So I wanna talk about how to work around in this environment. So I've got this file, and first let's say, oops, I didn't mean to get into this file. Well, the first thing I need to do is know how to get out of a file. And the easiest way to get out of a file would be to type the colon followed by a Q for quit. And this will get me out of the file. Now, if I'm in here and I've made a change, then if I try and do uh, colon Q, I'm gonna notice an issue and it's gonna say, hey, you haven't written since the last change, and notice it says add exclamation point to overwrite. So if I do question mark, Q, and then exclamation point, it's actually gonna get me out, and I will notice that none of the changes that I just made previously have maintained themselves. Now, I wanna talk about the two different modes that VI has. VI has something called normal mode, where we deal with some simple commands, and the way we enter normal mode is by hitting colon. And down there on the bottom line, you'll see a colon, and it's waiting for some command. So I can do colon W, which would write the current file, and notice it says that uh, 1,181,478 characters have been written. I can do question mark, WQ and that forces it to write then quit, in other words, save then quit, and it'll make sure it writes the file and then puts it here. And if I do ls with my uh, long listing, you'll notice that that file was just saved right now, today. Uh, it's 342 uh, GMT, which is six hours ahead of where we are in central time. Let me go back into my editor real quick. And of course, if I want to quit without saving, I do the question mark Q with the exclamation point. Okay. Now, the other mode is the insert mode. And what you may notice right now is that my cursor is this white block. And if I move around, you'll notice that white block moves around. If I hit I, this puts me in insert mode. And now I can actually insert characters. So I can say, you know, I can put extra characters in there. I can also delete that. Notice that if I hit escape to get out of this, if I try and type other letters, it's going to put me in insert mode, but it doesn't necessarily 
allow me to insert other letters. Um, I'm, to put commands in, I need to put the colon in. Otherwise, if I press I, that's going to put me in insert mode. <clears throat> One of the other things that's going to be important is to be able to look through this text file and find certain things. And if I want to do a search, what I do is I actually do the uh, forward slash. This forward slash that I've got right here, that's how I'm actually going to uh, search for things. So if I put myself in command mode and I do slash and I want to search for 777, it's going to find occurrences of 777. Notice that it basically took me to the next occurrence. And if I hit N, it's going to take me to the next location of 777 in the file, which is at 1777. Then 27, 37, 47, 57, 67, 77. The next occurrence is not going to be at 7777, but actually at 7770. And just by hitting N, it's advancing to the next instance of it. And down there at the bottom, you can see the search term that it's using here. So I have the ability to search for something by doing a forward slash and then whatever I want to search for. So if I wanted to search for, say, 33369, it'll take me to wherever that happens to be in my file. What's important to note is that it's searching forward. It's actually finding the next iteration of that. Now, if I wanted to return to the top of this file, I would do GG. GG, for good game, takes me all the way back to the beginning. Now, these are lowercase g's that I just typed, so a g followed by a g, just like that. If instead, in command mode, I did a capital G, that's going to take me all the way to the very end. It's going to take me to my 70,152nd line of code. So I can use GG, lower cases, to move all the way up to the top of my file, and a capital G to move to the bottom of my file. If I want to search for something in particular, let's say I want to search for an 8, well, there's an error. Notice that it couldn't find anything from the bottom of a file with an 8, so it continued to the top. And it continues to search from top to bottom. Now, one other thing that might be important is I may need to replace all of one instance with another instance. So let's say I wanted to replace the word million with the word banana. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself in this normal mode, command mode. And to do this search and replace, I'm going to do percent %s. And then I'm going to put a slash because I want to search for all occurrences of something. So I want to search for million. And I'm going to put a slash to show that here is where my search ends and my replace begins. So I want to replace it with banana. And then I'm going to put a slash to show that that's the end. And what this command will do is this will replace all occurrences of the word million with the occurrence of the word banana. And so now what I've got, 70,152 substitutions everywhere it says a banana. If I go to the top by doing lowercase g, lowercase g, all of these have been changed to banana. As a matter of fact, if I try and search for million, I will find that that word is no longer in my file. So I've got this ability to search and replace in the text file very simply using these commands. I also have the ability to cut, copy, and paste. It's not going to be the control C or the command V uh, to cut or paste like you're familiar with on Windows or Mac machines. Instead, what I need to do is I'm going to do control V. And what this does is this puts me, excuse me, I'm just going to hit V and that's going to put me in visual mode. And what I can do is I can highlight a certain amount of text. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight uh, 10 lines of code, partial on the 10th. And I'm going to cut this text. So I'm going to hit D to cut this text. Notice that the first 10 lines, 9 lines are gone, and the 10th line has been truncated. And it tells me I have 9 fewer lines. If I move my cursor to somewhere else, and then hit P to paste. Notice that those nine lines, I've got nine more lines here, all of that has been inserted. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
of bananas. Notice that even though I lost the banana part of line 10, or I should say the aban part on line 10, that part I don't get anymore. As a matter of fact, it's gone. And where I was on line 17 got taken out as well. So I lose some stuff on the line before or the line afterwards. If I want to get around that, what I do instead of using a lowercase v is I use a shift v. And the shift v is the visual line, which you see down at the bottom. And now I'm making sure I do a line at the time. Moving left or right doesn't change the copy buffer. Now we talked about how I did D to cut or delete a region. If I want to copy a region, I'm going to do Y. Y means yank in this situation. So I'm going to yank a region. Notice from 6 to 10 and 18 to 25. If I hit Y, notice it says 13 lines yanked. And if I go down here and paste, you'll notice that that lines 6 through 10 and 18 through 25. What I yanked has been pasted. So I've got D to cut, Y to yank or to copy, and P to paste. The last thing that I want to talk about in this video is if I want to delete some information. So the easiest way to delete information is to press D and then D again. And notice that this line 27 where my cursor was on has disappeared. If I do D, D again, that's going to delete line 28. I can delete an entire line at a time, or I can delete what we call the previous word, in other words, all the way to the previous part here. So if I do DB, in other words, delete and go to the beginning, DB takes me and gets rid of the word that was before it, in other words, the A. DB again is gonna get rid of that colon. DB again gets rid of the 29. And so I can use DB to kind of work my way backwards through a sentence. In a similar way, I can also use DE, in other words, delete to the end of the word. So DE gets rid of banana. DE gets rid of the colon and the number. DE is going to get rid of that colon and the A. In other words, get rid of everything up to the next space. So I have the ability to work around in this. And if I go ahead and do control Q to try and quit, it's going to tell me, hey, you've made changes, no writes and slash change. I can either do control Q exclamation point to get out without saving any of these changes. But if I want to save these changes, I can do control, uh, excuse me, colon Q, uh, colon W Q to write and then quit. And that will save my changes. So if I do head the first 30 lines of lots of lines, then I'm going to see the first 30 lines of this file. Notice that the part that I trimmed off of line 10 is still up here. Notice that line 17 has been kind of cut off with this one a banana. And then down here, the changes that I deleted those lines around line 25 to line 30, those changes have been made as well. Those have been saved in the file. The reason that we might need to use VI in this situation is we may need to change the settings or change the configuration or simply just edit a basic text file where we don't have remote access to it. We, the only access we have is through a command line. We don't have graphical access to it. And VI is a wonderful, simple word editor that allows us to make the changes that we'll need to make. Remember that if I wanted to uh, write a file, I would do colon W, that writes a file colon Q quits out of the file, and if I need to force myself to quit, I can do colon QW. If I want to write, then quit, then I do control WQ. I have the ability to put myself in insert mode by pressing the I key, and I can search by using the forward slash. This allows me to search for things, and I can also hit N to find the next occurrence of a search term. I can do a global search and replace by doing percent %s and putting my first term and my second terms between forward slashes. We also talked about how to cut, copy, and paste. I do D for cut. I do Y for copy. Y stands for yank in this situation. And I do P for paste. And what I do is I put myself in visual mode 
I use a lowercase v for characters. I use a capital V for lines. And this allows me to select just by using the arrow keys to maneuver the cursor. And then finally, one of the other things we talked about is how to move to the very top of the page, to the top of the document. And I can use a capital G to the move to the bottom of the document. Okay. A lot of people are scared of VI because it's unfamiliar. Part of its unfamiliarity is the fact that this word editor, this text editor, is 40 years old. At least the basic idea behind it was established in the 70s with the original Unix systems. But it's a legacy piece of software that's been maintained throughout the history of Unix and Linux. And it's definitely something that you can rely on being on virtually any Linux command line system that you're in. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.